Welcome to another episode of Estate Planning Nightmares and How to Avoid Them. I'm your host, John Braddock, author of the Amazon bestseller, Click Here When I Die, and founder of My Life and Wishes, an online planning and document storage solution created to make things easier for those you love. Today, we have another exciting episode for you, and I'm thrilled to introduce Laura Cullen. Laura, award-winning estate planning attorney and the creator of the two-hour lifestyle lawyer. Laura's estate planning practice focuses on helping individuals and families make important decisions today to avoid unnecessary pain and conflicts tomorrow. She understands how complicated the estate planning process can be and guides her clients step-by-step to ensure that their loved ones are taken care of and that their final wishes are carried out. A little more about Laura. She's been named uh, 2019 through 2023 Rising Star by Super Lawyers, an award reserved for the top 2.5% of attorneys in the state of New York. She's ranked as the second best estate planning attorney in New York by Yelp out of over 800 attorneys. And twice, she has been featured as top woman attorney in New York, in the New York Times. Laura has spoken at the United Nations headquarters on estate planning for non-citizens, has been published in Forbes, and is a member of the Entrepreneur Leadership Network for Entrepreneur Magazine. She is a frequent speaker at schools, workplaces, and churches. Laura enjoys educating families, individuals, and business owners within her community. Additionally, if Laura wasn't busy enough, she is the creator of the Two Hour Lifestyle Lawyer, which is an education business where she teaches lawyers how to practice estate planning virtually while still having a life. She's admitted to practice law in New York and Minnesota. In her spare time, Laura enjoys traveling, running in Central Park, and going to the New York City Ballet. So please welcome Laura to our show. Welcome, Laura. That that was a great introduction. <laughs> and that's pretty much my life in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> well, feel free to correct me wherever I, I make a mistake. Yeah, it no, does happen. that all sounds pretty accurate. And, and if I'm a little bit coffee today, I'm, I'm just getting over COVID which is surprising. We're all uh, we're all still getting COVID, but I've, I've been traveling a lot and I think I got it while traveling. So I've got a bit of a cough. Uh, isn't that amazing? You know, we thought, uh, you know, when this thing cleared up and the pandemic moved on that we're all through and people have been vaxxed and double vaxxed and triple vaxxed. And I'm still hearing uh, from people all the time, especially those that travel. Uh, a good friend of mine was in Denver for three days. He got home and he was flat out for like two or three days after with COVID. So yep. who knows? Who knows? Well, it's probably a good thing to have an estate plan in place though. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just in case. Am I right? You're definitely right. Yeah. This is uh this this whole pandemic has been a very good reminder of why estate planning is so important. Absolutely. Hey, you know, speaking of why, I always start uh, when I talk with people, I always like to, you know, begin with uh, with why, you know, your why. Um, yeah, the legal profession, there are so many areas uh, of law that can be practiced, right? You got criminal law, you got personal injury, family law, real estate, corporate. I mean, the list goes on and on. So, so why estate planning? Why did you select that field, Laura? Yeah, I think it's, it's a really good combination of all of the things that I'm interested in and good at. So, it's um, you know you're you're helping people right, which which is nice. Um, you're dealing with numbers, which as a former CPA, I I feel very comfortable with numbers and finances and and things like that. And it's also a good practice area to be in if you're entrepreneurial. And so th- those are sort of my strengths. I, I'm a lawyer, I'm a CPA, and I'm an entrepreneur. And if uh, you can combine those three things into anything, an estate planning practice is, is what's going to be the result. So uh, so that's why. And I'm interested in other areas of law as well, but you know, you can't really do everything, right? You've got to start to pick and choose. And so this is just, uh, this is this is where I landed and it's been a really good fit for me. That's fantastic. I think I read somewhere, I mean, you've got, 
um, and and I may be way off, but but well in excess of five hundred clients that uh, uh, you've done estate plans for, and you know, giving them yeah. peace of mind that uh, their family and things will be taken care of when that time comes. That's exactly right. Yeah, my my law practice is only about seven years old, which it, it's at the time you know it, it seemed uh, it, now it just seems like it's not that much, but. Um, but yeah, only about seven years old. And in that time, I've probably um, serviced certainly over 500 clients. So that's in, in a very competitive New York City market as well. So it's um, I've, I've dialed into to something here. And that's what I'm teaching in my two hour lifestyle course as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you about that, too, because that just really intrigues me. But uh, so I, I call this show estate planning night right? and how to avoid. It. So um you know, my purpose is to help people understand that if you don't have a an estate plan in place, or at least some, some legal documents expressing your wishes, that it can create a real, pardon my expression, shitstorm for the family. And I know this because my listeners know I live through this, which is why we created the My Life and Wishes platform. So um, in that vein, you know, I, I guess anyone that's dealing with the loss of a loved one is a nightmare right? Yeah. yeah. We, all, we all agree. But do you have a, a you know, a short story or two that, that you can share that maybe we can, you know, drive home the importance? Yeah, I've got a couple of stories. You know, one is the nightmare story, and then one is sort of the opposite of the nightmare story, which I think is also useful. So the nightmare story is, is just my own um, mother's estate plan. So she passed away in 2015. And, uh, she had a will, but I, she had done it herself on legal Zoom or, or something like that. She hadn't hired an attorney to do it. And so it wasn't executed properly. And so uh, you know, that caused all sorts of problems. And this, this is something that I think people who are thinking about doing their own estate planning, um, this is something that they don't think about is, you know, a will has to be executed with very strict legal formalities or else it's just not going to be accepted by the court. And my mom fell into that same, same category. You know, she had the will, um, but it wasn't considered valid. So as a result, her estate, which really was, was simple in the sense that everything was just going equally to her three daughters, uh, it ended up costing us about, I would say about $15,000 in lawyer fees. Um, you know, just uh, probating that will and distributing all my mom's money to her three girls. And uh, what, what she should have done was she should have worked with an attorney. She should have had a living trust, not a will, <laughs> and then put her, her condo in the living trust. And the whole fee would have been a couple thousand dollars. So it's, uh, it's not the, the, the most horrific horror story you've ever heard, but it's a very, very common one. Wow. You know, it, it's interesting. You know, I, I take a little sidebar here on, uh, I like to throw legal terms at you lawyers, you know, so I have a sidebar. Uh, it stopped, so, which is not, not a legal term, but yeah, I, I get the idea. <laughs> um, so, so DUI, um, we had an episode uh, a while back. If anyone uh, didn't listen to it, feel free to go back and listen to that. Uh, essentially why DUI might not be such a good idea. And so in people I've spoken with, they say, yeah, you know, I you know, did my own on legal zoom or rocket lawyer or free will or, or wherever. And it's like, cool. Cause you did that because, well, I want to save a little money. Great. Well, God bless your mother and rest her soul. She saved a little money that ends up costing the family yeah, easily 10 times the amount that uh, that it would have cost to have have an attorney do it. And that's that's money that she couldn't pass to her to her daughters uh, in in that scenario. So my advice is if anyone's out there and they have a, 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 a DYI will. Find an estate planning attorney who will at least review it for you. And then point out the things like saying, oh, this is great, John. I love your, your will. It looks great, except uh, it's executed in North Dakota. You live in Arizona. 
could be yeah. a problem. Yeah, it's always to save money. And I think that the reason, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it yourself to save money unless you thought that you could do it yourself. And I think that's the mistake that people make is they think, well, how, how hard can it be? Right. I, I'm just leaving everything equally to my three kids. And, and it's just a matter of not knowing what you don't know. And so you get this false sense of security uh, uh, that everything's been done properly. And um, that just usually is not the case. And, and um, that's, that's just the best way I can think of to describe it is that you don't know what you don't know. And an online form or something that my mom used um, not only may it not be executed properly, but it's it might be missing a bunch of provisions that any attorney worth her salt would include. Uh, you know, there's just a whole bunch of things. So it's um, you, you can't do it yourself, I guess, is, is, is the bottom line. Great, great advice and a, and a good story. Thanks for sharing. That. I know that's a personal uh, you know, situation. Um, so you mentioned you had another uh, story. Yeah, yeah. So this story, I think it's, it's it's a somewhat sad story, but I think it's an interesting story because it really illustrates um, when estate planning goes well. And so this was a, a client of mine who came in um, maybe maybe a couple of years ago. It was in the middle of COVID, um, but she came to my office, a single woman, about seventy years old, um, in good health. Everything was fine, but you know she wanted to get her will in place, and so we did a basic will for her and. Uh, one of the things that she was really adamant about uh, adamant about was her final dis, um, disposition instructions. So in other words, one of the things you can do in your estate plan is you can talk about, you know, I would prefer burial, I prefer cremation. These are the things I want to happen at my service. Whatever your specific wishes are, uh, you can get those in writing. And so it was, she was very adamant that she wanted to be cremated and that she wanted her ashes um, sprinkled from a hot air balloon. And I remember her telling me the story and she was sitting there and she was saying, you know, I just, I've traveled so much. And one of, one of the great joys of my life was traveling. And this just makes me feel like I'll be traveling for all eternity, you know, then, and that's fine. You're allowed to sort of think that. So, so I said, great, we put that in her final disposition instructions. And then um, completely unexpectedly, she passed away like a, a month later. Oh. Which, which is, I've never had a client pass away that that quickly, but it was it was sort of a sad story because she was meant to come into the office to pick up her binder with all of her signed documents. And I knew it was an appointment that she was looking forward to because none of us were really getting out of the house <laughs> at this time. So it was kind of like a big fun excursion to the lawyer's office and she didn't show up. And so I called and I checked in and a little bit of time went by and long story short, I finally just thought, my goodness, I, I hope she didn't pass away. And I Googled it and lo and behold, she had passed away. Um, but when I met with her family, I went over the final disposition instructions and they were completely surprised and so happy that they knew that she wanted her, her ashes to be, um, just, you know, set free from a hot air balloon. Um, they never would have known that. And they were so happy to know that because they could carry out her wish. Wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. Uh, you know, it, it's so true that um, when people don't leave those kind of final uh, instructions, especially relative to, do you want to be buried or cremated or green burial or acclimation or any number of the ways there are today, families left struggling, trying to make a decision and hoping that they're doing what would be pleasing to the, to the deceased. And um that's just really awesome, awesome that, you know, she had, had indicated that, you know, scatter them from, you know, somewhere because, you know, many people, I think cremation has actually exceeded burials now um, as a, as a form of, you know, uh, final wishes. And so many people don't know what to do. I mean, you know, I've told my wife, I said, I mean, please don't put me in a jar on top of the mantle. <laughs> right i mean that, that that didn't sound good to me so so everyone's got their I'm... yeah everyone's got their own wishes definitely definitely and it's it it, it was just uh that's kind of the point is mm -hmm. to you know to help make the family feel better you know um and the way that you make them feel better is by knowing that they're that your loved one's wishes have been sort of carried out so um 
yeah, so that 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 that's another story, a little a little bit sad, but I was also happy to see um, that the documents were doing their job. Uh, that's terrific. Yeah, I mean it's it's just so important to uh, you know provide that roadmap, if you will, to family because it you know arguably is the hardest time of their lives, um, and making decisions sometimes can be very difficult. And if they're if they're spelled out, uh, it's certainly uh, takes a lot of the burden off for families. So, oh, that's awesome. So, um, so let me ask this. I mean, I think we've kind of summed it up that, uh, you know, DYI is probably not the best thing, but if you've done that or are thinking about doing it, the advice of, uh, of an attorney to at least review it would be kind of essential. My advice, and it, it, again, um, you know, this isn't this isn't it's not just a ploy to sort of get business. You know, I don't think that in the seven years that I've been practicing, I have never had someone bring in their DIY will that was not severely deficient in many ways. Uh, and and one of the ways that it's often deficient is that it's it's in and of itself a will. Uh, for example, most of my clients, even sophisticated clients, when I meet with them. They don't realize that a will has to go through probate court. They think, well, the whole point of getting a will, isn't it? So I can avoid all that. And it's the exact opposite. Getting a will guarantees the will has to, is going to have to go through probate court. Now, maybe you don't mind, but maybe you do, right? And so oftentimes my clients are surprised when they come in with a will and I'm like, well, you have this will and, and it's, it's deficient in many ways, but even setting that aside... Do you realize that this is going to have to go through probate? And in New York, that's what this is going to have to look like. Um, and they almost always say, no, I had no idea. So you're the lawyer is going to tell you things that you, you know, that you, that Google may not have pointed out. It's, it's we're here to give advice and counsel on the law. And there's really no other way to get that but to go through an attorney. Yeah. And if, a, and if a person really wants to, because I, I, you know, and I don't know what it is in New York and it varies by state, but at least what I have heard, and I'm not an attorney, but the typical probate is going to take between 12 to 18 months before everything is finalized. Um, and that ties up, uh, ties up assets and things that, you know, family might be expecting. And so the the simple solution would be uh, a trust, right? Right. I, you know, one of my my colleagues was telling me um, the other day that it's taking up to a year in Kings County just to get an executor appointed, <laughs> and that's the very first step. You know, so now I've got lawyers in my program in all different states, and every state's a little bit different, uh, and so I'm not necessarily. Um, you know, proposing a will over a trust or vice versa in every situation. It's just going to be be different. But the point is, when you meet with the attorney, they're going to point out all of your options, and then you're going to be able to make a decision based on an, an educated, informed, you know, from an edu a place of education, rather than, oh, this is the bare bones, and I can do it myself online for a couple hundred dollars. Right, right. Now, that's awesome uh, advice. And, uh, you know, I know I, uh, I, I formed a company at, at one time earlier in my career, and I thought, I can do this on, you know, legal Zoom, right? And so I created, you know, a company and set it up. And then ultimately, I had to see an attorney on some other matter and talked about the company, they reviewed it, and they had to redo everything and resubmit uh uh, you know, the articles of incorporation and everything else. And, you know, it ended up costing me probably about what it would cost if I did it the right way the first time, but I was still out all that money from the first time. So. And uh, good, advice... thing nothing, good thing nothing went wrong in the meantime with your business, you know, thinking you've got the protections of an LLC and then you get sued and you realize you don't. So I get why people do. And for anyone listening who's listening to this, you know, my advice would be, I, I understand that it's scary, try, you know, thinking of trying to work with an attorney and finding a good one, you know, try to find one who bills a flat fee. Um, you know, there are definitely ways that you can make the process a little bit less scary. 
Um, and, uh, and that's one of the things that I, that I would recommend. Um, but it, yeah, this is just not, it's like parachutes or, you know, fire extinguishers. It's just not the sort of thing that you want to cheap out on. Exactly. And I can tell you, you know, I know a lot of people are always like, cause they're scared of the big bad attorney. Well, you know, I've met some attorneys that are a little bit scary, but I can tell all you listeners that Laura is not scary. So, I would be shocked if anyone thought I was scary. <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons I'm successful is because I'm not scary. <laughs> hey, I want to ask you this before we uh, we wind down on our time. Um, so yeah, with, with all the state planning work and running a very successful business and everything else, um, you needed something else to do. So you <laughs> created the two-hour lifestyle lawyer where you're you're coaching, mentoring, training lawyers to uh to have a life really can you can you yeah how did you come up with the concept and the, and the why behind that it's really interesting yeah i'm having a great time with two hour lifestyle lawyer this is a, a program that i developed about a year ago so summer of 2022 uh, a couple of years post covid and, and it was really when i found myself in a position where i was i was you know, bringing in consistently at that time, working part time about thirty thousand a month, um, doing estate planning here in the city. Uh, there were definitely times where I was bringing in a lot more, but I was when I was working on it full time. But but post COVID, it was sort of was a virtual thing. It was part time, and I was still making really good money. And one one of the things that I've noticed post COVID is that there's a lot of lawyers that are interested in adding in estate planning as a practice area now that we can do it virtually because we used to really be tethered to our office, but now you could do it all via Zoom. And then I think you combine that with the fact that society in general, we're all just tired of working too much. You know, at post COVID, we, all of our priorities have shifted. And I think one of the priorities that shifted is we're no longer feeling the pressure to build a million dollar law practice. We really we wanna use our law degree and do important work, but we also wanna have a life. And so I was I was zigging when everyone else was zagging. Instead of saying, I'm going to help you build your million dollar law practice, you know, my 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 tagline is we'll help you make we'll help you make at least 10,000 a month doing estate planning virtually, and you can do this working part-time. And so that's what we're teaching our members. And we've had over 200 lawyers take the course already, which I'm really, really proud of. We've got the most amazing attorneys in our program. They're so supportive and smart and ambitious. And they're all there for the right reason. You know, the same reason that I'm teaching the course, which is we all want to, to do something really great with our law degree, but we also don't want to feel like we've got to build a million dollar practice. And so we teach estate planning if you don't already have any kind of a foundation in it. And um, we also teach you how to set up your whole practice and how to market it and how to service clients online, you know, from A to Z. And it's, uh, it's about the most rewarding, rewarding thing I've ever done, because I know how hard it is to be an attorney. I know how hard it is to hang your own shingle. Um, I know how hard it is to support yourself or to have to support others. And uh, to the extent that I can help other lawyers do that, it's, uh, it's really, really meaningful. That's wonderful. So all the, uh, all the attorneys listening, and you might not be in estate planning now, but you're working 80 hours a week and getting frustrated, scale some of that back, take Laura's course, work two hours a week on it. Two hours a day. Two hours, two, a hours, day. <laughs> two hours a day. Two hours a day. And generate 10, 20, 30, $40,000 a month in, uh, in new revenue. And, and the cool part is you don't have to go to court and sue people. And you don't have to go to the office either. I love it. I love it. Well, that's brilliant, uh, Laura. I really, uh, I'm so grateful for your time uh, coming on, uh, sharing some of your insights, some of your stories, talking to our audience and, uh, and sharing a little bit about what you're doing to help, uh, you know, build a better attorney uh, in, the, in the marketplace. How could our listeners get a hold of you if they had like if well if they're in New York obviously or somewhere you practice uh, for estate planning matters or just general questions uh, and then also if they're an attorney and want to find out more about your program. 
Yeah, so I'm presuming you'll drop all of these links in the in the, the chat or, or whatnot, but the Two Hour Lifestyle Lawyer, uh, the website is number two, and then Our Lifestyle Lawyer. Um, so that's our website. It's got information about the course, and you'll be able to book a discovery call, which is the first step in, in joining our program. And that's a call with me and a few other attorneys, and uh, and uh, we'll we'll talk about the program and the investments and and what's involved. Um, so twohourlifestylelawyer.com. My email is Laura at twohourlifestylelawyer.com. And then my law firm is uh, it's in New York City, the law office of Laura Cowan. So um, that's Earth. Laura E. Cowan Law.com. I know you'll drop all those in the chat, but but the yeah, the, the, the best way to reach me is probably at Laura at twohourlifestylelawyer.com. Perfect. And we'll put all that in the notes. Um, Laura, I'm so thankful. Thank you so much for joining us and, uh, and sharing some of your experience. We'll look forward to having you back on, uh, at another time. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. And I'm excited to, um, to bring my life and wishes more into the 2HLL community, because I know there's going to be a lot of interest in it. Uh, wonderful. And thank you so much. And, and our listeners, thank you for joining us. And as always plan ahead and make it a great day. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe, listen, and download all the Estate Planning Nightmares episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. We'd be grateful if you would save our show to your favorites and share them with others. Remember, life is messy, but death is messier. You can learn more about My Life and Wishes Legacy Vault at www.mylifeandwishes.com. Plan ahead and make it a great day.